Hey guys, welcome back to another House of Lasers tutorial. Um, today I wanted to focus on something I got from another laser user. And it's just a picture of a badge. Uh, it's not something that you're going to be able to trace and get good quality out of, so I want to show you how I would typically attack this and how I would break it down and, and basically recreate it. Um, so the first thing that I would do would be head over to the internet and I would do a search for that particular badge. And a lot of times you could find either on their Facebook page or, or on their website, you could find a, a good quality vectorized graphic. Um, not the case this time, unfortunately. So what I'm going to do is um, I narrowed it down to uh, black and white photos. Uh, you could also narrow it down by size under tools. So that'll give you those options. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do now is, is really kind of look for one that is similar. And right off the bat, I'm seeing that this one right here is, is kind of the same. Uh, something that I can make work for sure. Um, I really like this because it has all of the attributes that the other one has. Um, minus the fact that these lines are extended a little bit longer. And of course, uh, they're giving you something that's not of great quality, so you're trying your best to recreate the image to as close to the likeness as you can. Uh, so for the most part, as close as you can get it um, without deviating from the design, the better. So. I clicked on this one first, and it's it's kind of small. Uh, yeah, that, that's kind of a small graphic, so I'm going to go with this one. Even though it's different colors, I'm fairly confident that I can get that to trace for, pretty well. Uh, let me just double check and make sure there's not something else here that would be even better. Uh, let's see. No, I'm going to stick. I'm going to stick with this one. So I'm going to right click on it, copy image, and we're going to come back to the web here in a second. Oops, let's paste that. All right, so of course it's not it's not the best and it's not exact. I mean, we're, we're this is Minnesota and the other one is Kentucky. Um, we're going to have to replace the text. We're going to have to do a little bit of work here, but I'm here to show you that it's really not that difficult. So we'll trace. And let me fade image. This way I can see exactly what I'm grabbing. And I don't care how the words turn out or the state seal in the center. I am only looking at these dots, the outside lines, um, the main component of of this badge and for me right now I mean I'm I'm pretty happy with it um, I think we're just gonna go with that all right so once you're here um, now it's kind of time to get rid of a lot of the other stuff that you don't need you know we could do our again our left to right red box and that's only going to select stuff that is inside of the box. And there we go. Uh, we need to get rid of all this. I'm going to go from right to left. And anything that's overlapping will get caught in that box. And we'll be able to delete all of that stuff. Alright. That's done. The only thing that I'm concerned about is accidentally overlapping and getting some of those circles in that ring and it looks like I did that up here copy paste and we'll just we'll just make do pretend it didn't even happen all right so now we have the issue of the seal. The state seal looks difficult. So we're going to look for the Commonwealth 
of Kentucky Seal. Seal. Let's see here. We'll do the Commonwealth. Commonwealth of Kentucky. State Seal. Okay. So this seems like it's an older version. Um, we might be able to grab this one right here. This looks like it's the closest. Um, it's old. Uh, it looks old. And if the, the customer is okay with it, um, I would go with something that's better quality. Like this one looks really good. This is a huge graphic. Um, I would try to convince them to um, to have the better quality graphic and better lines so that it, it engraves better. Uh, if they're dead set on having it exactly, uh, you're not gonna get it exactly like that. They can only do such a good job replicating stuff with these badges anyway. But it looks like this is the one that they had. And this is the one that I would probably end up going with. Um, of course, if we wanted to keep that, this is a decent sized picture. We could always grab that one. I'm going with this one. Copy image. And we will paste. Shrink it down a little bit. My option T for trace. And I don't even have to think about this one. This one's going to come out perfect. <clears throat> Delete that. All right, so now that we have our seal and our badge, now we have to start doing our words. And typically with, with these badges, at least, uh, jeans, England. I find that a rounded aerial font um, kind of matches that stamp, uh, the stamp kind of font that they use on these. And let's see if I can find it real quick. So this is typically what I would use for that. And uh, I'm just going to leave it to Lightburn and it's bendy text to get me to where I need to be. Let's zoom in. Shrink it down a little bit more. We can. That's a little bit too much. Let's change the height on that just a little bit. There we go. Try to center it the best we can. All right, and now, now we need Deputy Sheriff. It's all caps. And then a um, separate line so we could bend it the other way. We will do Allen County. Switch our tools here, and bend it again. I think I actually bent it a little bit too much. There we go. And I'm going to have to shrink that a little bit just to try to keep it within the same sizing, the same confines of of what the badge originally was. And of course, let's sort of just click on that. It's 0 0.3375, 0 0.3375. I'll arc that. And then there's dots on there that not reproduced yet and typically what I'll do is 
and I'll actually just copy. This way I know for sure they're exactly the same. Um, I want to align that one with this one. So now they're even. Um, that looks pretty darn close. That as well. Now, let me expand it just a little bit so I can see exactly how close we are to the original. And like I said, it, it, you're not, um, I'm not going for exact. Um, otherwise I would be cutting, I would be cutting these and changing them a little bit. Um, my guess is this is a gift for, for somebody that's either retiring or a current deputy. And um, unless the municipality actually contracted you, um, and if they do, I'm gonna guess that they have good graphics. Uh, but if somebody local wants it done for a sheriff that as a gift, they're going to be more than happy with with the way that something like this turns out. And it's it's easy. It took us uh, a very short period of time. Uh, most of that time typically is looking around on the internet for something that's comparable. Um, let me get rid of this and see exactly what we have. And. There you go. I mean, minus uh, making sure that everything is exactly lined up, you have a fairly easy to recreate bag. All right, for a quick side note, um, so say that we're engraving this on a tumbler and you want the letters to be left behind rather than being engraved, because right now everything black is being engraved. Uh, you may want the letters to be stainless on the tumbler and um, everything else to be the paints. So, so say you're doing a green one and, and you know the sheriff's logos are green um, and you want everything else to be green. We could quickly change that. So you have to remember that the laser sees turn on and turn off points. So right now this is our turn on point and then it's gonna avoid everything on the interior of this. We have to create a new turn on point so that it starts prior to this turn on point. So basically we would just do an outer, outer offset distance like that. And that completely changes the way the laser sees it and where to start engraving. So now the color of the cup will be left behind in all of the white areas and everything else will be engraved away so just a quick tip you know just remember that as the laser is coming along it sees a turn on and a turn off point um, and you can easily change that on any graphic by basically just adding a line um, real quick Let's say that we wanted the interior to be different. We have lots of different lines in there. Um, if we ungrouped it and we got rid of one, just getting rid of one line would change absolutely everything. Um, now we have a white, so a non-fill inside and it will be engraving just the letters where prior to that, uh, when we had the line, it was doing the reverse. So just remember the turn on points and you can change the entire way the graphic uh, engraves that, um, that you don't have to pay somebody for. Uh, again, it's not exact, uh, but it will get the job done and uh, you don't have to spend hours and hours trying to get something to trace that will never trace correctly. And you know, that's a lot of frustration saved if you just look for other graphics and combine them all together and, and create it quickly for yourself. I hope this helps. Um, thanks again. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're uh, going to continue to try to make some more fun and interesting content. Thanks, guys. Have a great one.